Okay, let's start our discussion with diffusion. And diffusion is this idea that particles that are in high concentration, notice that here on this side there's many more than there are on this side, that any time you have a high concentration, the concentration of the material is going to move towards the area of low concentration. That's just the property of nature. It is a truth that happens in almost every form, in every different kind of science. You'll see that high pressures move towards low pressures, that high concentrations move to low concentrations. So it's almost, uh, almost a truism that things move from high to low, always from high too low. Okay, so we're looking at here a high concentration of sugar, a lump of sugar, if you will, that's being placed into water, which obviously has a low concentration of sugar and actually no sugar at all. So here's your high and then here's your low. As, you, as the lump of sugar settles down to the bottom, there's your high. And of course, the sugar molecules then start to move towards the low side throughout the entire solution the water molecule the sugar molecules diffuse they separate they move into as many they move into every corner of the solution until every corner of the solution is of equal concentration and what's important to understand is that they're continuously moving so this what this sugar molecule over here might move might move to another area over here. This sugar molecule here might move to another area over here, but then this molecule over here, they won't take over its place and move back and fill in that empty blank space. So you have to consider that this is a continuous dynamic, the word is dynamic process, and that dynamic process means that this water molecule will continue, these, water, these sugar molecules will continue to move back and forth, back and forth, and, but still keeping that equal concentration. Okay, when we're looking at semi-permeable membranes, we're, we're talking about a membrane, is a sheet that separates one side from the other that allows for some things to pass through, but not others. So this little sheet here, this sheet of, it could be in any number of substances, allows some things to pass through, but not others. In this case, in this example, it allows water to pass through, but not the sugar. The sugar molecules can't pass through. The sugar molecules are the blue dots. So these blue dots are sitting here, and they're obviously at a higher concentration on side one than they are on side two in the beginning, at the start. This is the beginning of the example. So at the start of the reaction, the start of the, uh, the start of the process, it's not a reaction, but the start of the process, you have on side one, more concentrated sugar, more sugar than you do water, all right? More, wa more sugar, less water. On side two, you have more water and less sugar. So side one is more concentrated, where side two is less concentrated. Now, concentration. You have to remember what concentration is. So you have the concentration you need to remember is the mass of the solute divided by the volume of the solvent. And I think you'll agree that on <coughs> side one, you have many more blue dots for the same amount of volume that you do on side two. Hence again, that we have more concentration of sugar on the on side one than you do on side two. When you look at the right-hand side, the right-hand beaker, you see that the, the, the small, we still have side one, we still have side two. What has happened is the water has actually moved from side two to side one. The reason it's moved is that this membrane, this semi-permeable membrane, does not allow, again, does not allow sugar to pass through. And because it doesn't allow sugar to pass through, water has to. Water has to pass through in order to equilibrate the, the two sides, in order to bring the two sides closer to, to, the, to each other's concentration. So water starts to move to the left from side one to side two until you have one and two about equal concentration. 
So yes, you have more sugar on the left, you have more sugar on side two, side one, but you have more wa you have more water than you used to on side one. Now you have less sugar on less sugar on sugar we're talking about here. Uh, less sugar on side two, but you have less water as well. So if you made the calculations, the concentrations would actually be equal. And that's where we get this word, equilibrium. Now, that does not mean that the, wa the sugar molecules, the water molecules stop moving. For every one molecule that goes this way, there's a water molecule that goes that way once equilibrium is reached, okay? So they have this thing called dynamic equilibrium. But all this is because the sugar, this, this membrane is semi-permeable and does not allow water, does not allow sugar rather, to pass through it. And water is the only thing that can pass through it. But things are always forced to move from high to low. So we keep this thing, the, the force of nature that moves things from high to low forces the water. We call this process, this whole movement of water, we call it osmosis. Okay, osmosis. And osmosis is this process of water moving because of the concentration of solutes. The cell membrane is one of those semi-permeable membranes, and because it's semi-permeable, it's going to allow some things through and other things not. However, this idea, in this example here, all these blue dots are able to pass through the membrane without any trouble. So you're going to get pretty much this is diffusion. As time goes on, you have a high side over here and a low side over here. Uh, so of course you're going to get, of course because you have a high there and a low here, you're going to end up with a movement of particles, a net movement of particles from high to low. So let's take a look, another look of this at this word called osmosis, right? So here we have the movement of water. We're going to focus on the movement of the water. Now on the side one over here, you have solute. On side two, there's no solute. So over time, as time goes by, now remember this is time, going from start, all right, and this is here before, and then to finish, which they write in the graphic after, you have the solute can't move past this semi-permeable membrane. So the solute cannot move the solute because this is a semi-permeable membrane. Now because it's semi-permeable, some things can move, some things can't. Water is able to move, the solute is not. So this is going to move towards equilibrium. This side is not, side one is high concentration, side two is low. So the water is going to move, the, the, even though the solute would normally move from high to low, which means it would move from this side to this side. That's what the solute would do. The water, however, because the solute cannot move, the solute cannot move, the water is going to move from in the opposite direction, allowing the both sides to have equal concentrations. Or, com some, uh, or close to equal concentrations. So you're going to see the water level on the left-hand side go up. The left-hand side water level went up because the solutes, the solutes concentration had to try to equilibrate. They, there's no way you could keep this solute side and this non-solute side at equal concentration or close to equal concentration if you didn't dilute the left side. Now, now, I want to emphasize the difference between this idea of diffusion and the idea of the, through just any membrane and diffusion and the idea of osmosis. Now, the, the, even though the two are very similar, there are some really key differences. Now, in diffusion, what we're talking about is that here's this dye molecule. In this case, it's yellow, these yellow spheres are, are going to move from high on this side. This side's high and this side's low. So of course the net movement's gonna be from high to low. The net movement again is gonna be from high to low. So notice the direction of the arrow. It's moving from the left side to the right side. And you can see over time, if this is all time, right, time, 
you can see that from set from picture graphic one to graphic two to graphic three, we have the the dye molecules moving through the per, the permeable membrane. This is a permeable membrane because it's letting both the water and the dye through, and by the two sides equilibrate, they come to an equilibrium. Which means, if you notice the arrows, please, please focus on these arrows. That does not mean that there's no movement. It means that there's equal movement equal movement to both sides equal movement in both directions all right so we're having one some you know molecules from the left going to the right right to the left but they're e they're moving in equal directions the same amount they're going to the left they're going to the right so there's no net movement now at the bottom, you'll notice that you have a net diffusion is if you have two, what happens when you have two solutes? You have some yellow dyes on the right, on the left, and you have some purple dyes on the right. Now there's no purple dye on the left, so what's going to happen is you're going to get some of the purple dye moving to in. For the purple dye, this is high and this is, this is low. For the yellow dye, this is high and this is low. So the yellow dyes are going to move towards the right and the purple dyes are going to move towards the left until you get about equal on both sides again reaching equilibrium you have to be careful though right because here we're talking about the direction of movement is going to be different depending on which of the two molecules you're talking about from graphic one you see that there's two unequal sides there's the purple high and the and then there's a the yellow high and that direction of movement is going to be different depending on which molecule you're talking about. That's why they have a yellow arrow or gold arrow and a purple arrow. All right, let's go on then to osmosis.